In fact, in his current role as the Chairman and Managing Director, he's providing strategic vision and overall direction to REC for achieving its corporate objectives. Under his leadership, REC has achieved greater heights looking to diversify into energy transition and infrastructure funding businesses, along with its strong footprints across the energy sector. And he's here to speak to us about power, India's emerging areas, and future growth. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Sri Vivek Kumar Devangan, IAS, in a fireside chat with Nikunj Dalmia. You know, I just want to set the tone for uh, this discussion and what we must realize is that 20 years ago, summer in Delhi was almost five hours power cut a day. We used to use a phrase uh, 24 by 7 and we still use the word 24 by 7. The difference is that 20 years ago, in seven days you would get 24 hours of power. Today, literally in 24 hours you get full power. So there's a lot in terms of how the 24 by 7 phrase has changed. So walk us through that for a sector which almost went through a existential crisis, both at the central level, state level, even at municipal level. Why is that we've seen radical power reforms? I mean, it is extraordinary, isn't it? In the last eight to nine years, power sector has seen a tremendous transformation. RC was nodal agency on behalf of Ministry of Power, Government of India, to carry out massive exercise of village electrification. It was launched in December 2014. We carried out 100% village electrification, about 18,347 villages were electrified over a period of 41 months. See? And similarly, we had carried out this household electrification covering about 2.86 crore household over a short span of 18 months. This, as, uh, we have been able to resolve the issue of universal access to electricity. At the same time, we have also been focusing on strengthening the distribution infrastructure. That's why, the, as you rightly pointed out, that Reliability of power supply has improved tremendously. Now you, you won't find inverters and these generator sets. Earlier it used to be norm. Now it has gone away. Now the electric supply in rural areas, which was earlier about in the year 2012, it was about 12 to 13 hours. It has gone up to more than 22 hours in the rural areas and in urban areas we have been able to supply reliable power supply more than 23.5 hours uh, in a day. Okay. So now is the second part, which is that the world is getting what is called as ESG conscious environment, social and governance. E is the biggest challenge for us. India has out of the top 10, six most polluted cities. In India, a large part of the power is still generated by thermal, which is coal, just for the benefit of, of the audience here. What will happen at a time when we need to transit into new sources of power, but our core dependence is still on thermal? I would like to highlight that India is one of the few G20 countries which has been able to maintain its nationally determined contribution as committed in Paris Agreement in 2015. We had committed that our 40% of electric, uh, installed electricity will come from non-fossil fuel sources by the year 2030. But we have achieved this 40% installed capacity in the year 2021 itself. Now we have increased our ambition that our 50% of installed capacity will come from non-fossil fuel sources by the year 2030. And we are targeting about 500 gigawatt of installed electricity capacity from the non-fossil fuel sources. Uh, uh, India has proudly announced in Glasgow COP26 that will bring down our emission intensity of economy by 45% as compared to 2005 level. Will in this process in the next seven to eight years, 
the total carbon emission will get reduced by 1 billion ton. And we also put an ambitious target to become net zero by the year 2017. So all these efforts are taking place and in India is playing a, a leading role in energy transition efforts all over the uh, world. You know, REC, Rural Electric Co Corporation, now it used to be a symbolic word which you used to use because your business has completely transitioned. Uh, walk us through that. Actually, REC was established in 1969. That time it was just after Green Revolution to energize the electric pumps. Now, REC's role has gone much beyond that. It became a non-banking finance company, then it became Mini Ratna company, then it became Navratna company. Now, in the year, last year, REC has become Maharatna company. Now, our focus, the REC is used to be known as for rural electrification now. Now, in future, as per our new business strategy, REC would be known for renewable energy. RE will stand for renewable energy. Our main focus is going to be the financing the energy transition efforts in the country, be it the solar, wind, hybrid projects, or since uh, renewable energy is intermittent in nature, we need to have storage solution. Until unless we have storage solution, we'll not be able to provide the grid stability. So we are also planning to finance storage solution like battery energy storage or pump storage projects or hydrogen fuel cell pro projects for which research and development activity is going on. We are also targeting new areas like green hydrogen, green ammonia, and offshore wind also. That is going to be our main focus as far as RDC's business strategy is concerned. Uh, let me ask you something which is very sensitive to the stock market. And, you know, PFC and REC, they were two independent uh, companies. Till the time the cross-holding was changed a couple of years ago. Hmm. What happens now going forward for PFC and REC? Will they remain one? Will it, they be merged? There has been talk about the merger of REC and PFC. But the one basic problem is that Government of India shareholding in PFC is about 55%. And the share of PFC in REC is about 52%. If both the companies get merged, the share of Government of India will come down below 50%. It will be around 44%. It will not remain a government company. So we do get a lot of inherent advantage being a go uh, government company. Plus, our lending capacity also gets limited. If REC and PFC are separate company, like if you are taking any lending from financial institution, we can take 20% of their net worth. Suppose a financial institution is having net worth about 1 lakh crore. REC and PFC can raise 20,000 crore each. But if they get merged, the merged entity will be able to raise only 25% of their net worth. That is about 25,000 crore. So that is uh, the issue that merger doesn't seem feasible. So both, both will remain, they both will coexist. Yes. So my next question, let's understand REC. Now, uh, your cost of borrowing is perhaps just slightly above what the government of India 10-year paper is. Your NPAs have come down, and I think you are planning, you are aiming to become a zero net NPA company soon. Yes. How will you achieve that in the next three to four years? Last year, we have been able to resolve about 10 stress assets. So we have been able to get the good value Earlier, we had made provision of 70% in our uh, loan books for this stage asset, but we were able to take proactive action and our head uh, haircut has been, been less than what was anticipated. The going forward, we are targeting to resolve other stage assets, and in next two to three years, we are targeting to become net uh, zero NPA company. Uh so hypothetically, if I take the clock back, and this is IC 2028, and hopefully we are engaging in a similar kind of a conversation, what do you think would be the new face of REC? How much would be government? How much would be private sector? And how much would be to the non, uh, you know, non-thermal projects in terms of financing? Yeah. Right now, the financing of REC is 90% in the state sector. We have been financing. 90% state utility projects and 10% in the private sector. Going forward by the year 2028, our renewable energy share, right now our total loan books 
Only 6.8% is for renewable energy sector. But by the year 2028-29, our share of renewable energy portfolio will increase to about 30%. And the share of financing in private sector is likely to increase because most of the investment in renewable energy sector is coming through the private sector only. Uh, let's just, you know, give an example and for the, for the house here and for the audience here. Solar power prices 10 years ago were 15 rupees per unit. Now they've come down to almost 3 rupees per unit. Yeah. And I've been told that in the next 3 to 4 years they will go down by another 80%. If you are financing, let's say, a solar project where the cost of production is decreasing, unlike thermal where the cost of power and cost of production does not increase, how would you finance these projects where the, where the cost and the technology is always changing? Yeah. In fact, going forward, the cost of renewable energy, cost of the power generated from renewable energy sources is going to come down. It has touched about 2 rupees 45 paisa per unit as of now. So we are, what we are planning to do is that we are targeting bring down the interest rate. We are targeting low cost financing from external commercial borrowing. We are targeting to get as much as low cost uh, financing for the renewable energy sector and will be able to match the reduction in interest rate by increasing the vo volume of our financing. Uh, but states still, and state discoms still right now, are not in a good financial state. We pretty much know that every time when it comes to managing power, when it comes to the deficit, if I may use the word power ki chori, it is still there. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a structural problem for us. So while what the central government has done is great, some states are also leading the charge in terms of filling the void between, uh, you know, power, uh, you know, shortage versus power demand. In general, what is the long-term solution for this? Yeah. For distribution sector, Ministry of Power has taken a lot of uh, initiatives in the last few years. We had brought liquidity, liquidity infusion scheme when the COVID, onset of the COVID took place in 2020, about 1 lakh 12,000 crore was infused in the discounts to pay the dues of the GENCOs and transmission companies. Now, in the year 2021, this revamped distribution sector scheme has been launched. That is primarily to improve the financial health of the distribution companies. We are targeting to bring down the ATNC losses to about 15%. In fact, post-COVID, there has been a lot of improvement. Last year itself, the ATNC losses have come down from 22% to 17%. Similarly, there has been huge reduction in the government department dues. Earlier, it was, used to be about 90,000 crore. Now, it has come down to about 60,000 crore. Similarly, the legacy subsidy, which state governments are supposed to give to the DISCOM, it has also come down. Earlier, it used to be about 99,000 crore. It has come down to about 72,000 crore. So with the proactive efforts and reforms being undertaken in the revamped distribution sector scheme, I hope that financial health of the discounts will definitely improve. Uh, I'm going to go back to a very basic question, you know, because we sometimes don't appreciate what's happened in terms of the power sector. Ten years ago, what was the average availability of power per day in the rural sector? And what is the availability right now? Mm -hmm. And in terms of the last mile reach, how much that number is now? We have been able to reach all the unelectrified household. We have been able to cover the unelectrified village to the extent of 2, lakh, two crore 86 lakh household. And the power availability in the rural areas, which used to about 12 to 14 hours a day, it has increased to about 21 to 22 hours in the rural areas. And in urban area, it is 23 to 24 hours. Some of the areas, we are getting 24 by 7 power supply. Our effort is to ensure the reliable and sustainable and affordable power to all. What about the last aspect, affordability? I mean, some, this is something which is always a challenge because in India you import coal. In India you know that there is always a challenge in getting good quality supply chain because Coal India is the only large supplier. Uh, coal is an international commodity. Last year because of war, prices really went haywire. Mm -hmm. what, what is the long-term solution to address the last part, affordability? See, connectivity is a function of reach. It is a function of distribution. It is a function of at and losses. Mm -hmm. But power banana to padega, and that yeah. comes at a cost. As far as availability of power and installed capacity is concerned, right now our installed capacity is about 430 gigawatt. 
and our Central Electricity Authority has made an estimate that by the year 2030 will require about 817 gigawatt of uh, total installed capacity. 50% of it will come from the non-fossil fuel sources, mainly from renewable energy sources. But coal-based thermal power plant is going to play a major role because the balancing power will come from coal-based power. We do have sufficient stock of coal in the country. Coal India and all the coal companies have been able to increase their production. Now they are targeting the coal production to, to the tune of 1 billion ton per annum. And we have sufficient stock of coal. As far as coal-based power are concerned, next 20 to 30 years, they are going to stay there. But as the share of renewable energy is going to increase in the entire energy basket, we need to have flexible operation of coal-based thermal power plant. They have to, right now, their technical minimum is about 55%. We'll have to bring it down. Their technical minimum may perhaps it has to be, to be brought down to about 40%. Okay. Uh, one final question. Next three to five years, where do you see power price in, in rural India moving and urban India moving? Power prices are likely to uh, come down actually because more of this renewable energy is getting injected. The cost of the renewable energy is going to come down. So we, most, most of the next three to four years, the cost of the power and is going to come down because of the improvement in the distribution system also. You know, it's been um, such a fascinating chat we've had. We started with how the power demand in India versus how the power ability in the demand it ha has moved. You know, we underestimate that from 10 to 12 hours of availability of power now is going to 22 hours in rural India and almost 23 and a half hours when it comes to urban India. Companies like REC, what role they've played is absolutely amazing and fascinating. And if one looks at what the stock performance of REC is, I'm going to share a data here. I mean, it's one of the best performing stocks in the last two years. So keep up the good work, and I'm sure investors will continue to keep this faith on you. So thank you very much, and so lovely of you that you could find time to join us at the India Economic Conference. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you. Thank you very much.